In this section, we're going to look at more integrals of the form. The integral from a to b of f of x dx. Those definite integrals that have bounds from a to b, which means you're going to integrate first. So from lowercase f, we'll get to capital F of x. And instead of having a plus c at the end, we'll use an evaluation bar. And we'll go from a to b. And that means plug in b into your antiderivative first, and then subtract plugging in a into your antiderivative. And you want to remember the answer is a number for these definite integrals. The only difference between this and the section that we did before is that here we're going to have some integrals that require some u substitution. So looking at this first example, we are taking the integral from 0 to 2. So we have a definite integral. We're not going to have a plus c. We're going to have an evaluation bar, and our final answer is going to be a number. But what's inside the integrand this time is x squared times x cubed plus 4 all to the fifth, which would require a product rule if we took the derivative of it and also a chain rule. So definitely a complicated derivative, which means it's going to be u sub for the antiderivative. So we're going to let u be the factor that's being manipulated, in this case the second factor, x cubed plus 4. We're going to take the derivative of that. Derivative of u with respect to x. Derivative of x cubed is just 3x squared. Derivative of 4 is 0. And then we're going to get du by itself by multiplying by dx. And now I have one extra step before I can do some substitution. I have my u right here, raised to the fifth. I know that I'm going to try to make a perfect du if it's not already. But now I have bounds to switch as well. So that's a little bit different than what we've done before. So we haven't had bounds just yet, but now we do. I want to figure out what is u when x is 0, and what is u when x is 2. Because it says it's the integral from 0 to 2, but those are x values. So I'm going to plug in to u and see what u is when x is 0 for the lower bound and when x is 2 for the upper bound. So I'm going to plug into this function here. I'm going to do 0 cubed plus 4. And when I plug in 0 for x, I get 4 out for my u. And then I'm going to do 2 cubed plus 4. So 2 for x is going to give me 12 out for what u equals. 2 cubed plus 4. x cubed plus 4. And now I'm ready for my substitution. I am taking the integral from 4. 4 to 12 in terms of u, and I know it's u to the fifth, and now I just have to figure out what do I need to have in order to have the perfect du. So this is all u to the fifth. I need a 3, an x squared, and a dx for a perfect du. I have an x squared and a dx, but I just have one x squared, and I need it to be 3x squared. So what I have is one third of my perfect du. I have one x squared, it's too small, it's one third of the perfect du. The other way of doing it is I'm gonna put the three in there to give me three x squared dx, but if you need a three on the inside, you put a one third outside. One third, my perfect du is what's in there. Now I'm ready to integrate. This should be the easiest step. It should be a basic integral now. So I have a one third. And I have u to the fifth. So I'm going to add 1 and get 1 over 6, u to the sixth. Normally I'd write plus k, but now I have an evaluation bar. I'm going to evaluate from 4 to 12 in terms of u, and I'm never going to even have to go back to x to figure out what this equals. So now I could probably grab my calculator. I might multiply these fractions together to make it faster to plug into my calculator. 1 times 1 is 1. 3 times 6 is 18. So I have 1 18th of u to the 6. So fundamental theorem says plug in your upper bound first, 1 18th of 12 to the 6 minus 1 18th of 4 to the 6. And I typically, how I would plug it in, is I would just keep that 1 18th out front, and I'd do 12 to the 6 minus 4 to the 6. I think that's the fastest way to plug it into your calculator. However you want to plug it in, what you should get is 165,000 
660.4 repeating. I remember integrals are used to tell the net area under the curve. This curve is just very high up. We have a lot of positive area under it, so it's way above that x-axis.